What if I told you that the row ID could change without you doing a thing? Can your apps handle that? We often use the row ID value to efficiently update records after we've queried them. And most people who are developers will be familiar with this. The row ID points to a row, so you grab the row, use it to do an update, etc. I know Apex can do the same as well, but our DBA has just told us not to do it. They said you only use the row ID if you are doing block corruption checks. Are they correct? Standard answer, yes and no. Let's see why people use the row ID and let's see why there are some risks associated with it. So here's sort of the common knowledge when it comes to row IDs. I've got a row in a table and that row obviously sits somewhere in a file out on disk. It might be an ASM, might be raw, but it's generally a file somewhere on disk. Inside that file, we have a database block. That row must sit inside a block and therefore it sits somewhere inside that block. So the, th the three things you need to find a row in an Oracle database are what file it's in, what block in that file, typically an 8K block, and what row in that block is it. And that's what we call the row ID. The way indexes work is by storing that row ID associated with keys. So if I'm looking for this row, which is a lovely green key, I navigate my way down the index nice and efficiently. That tells me, ah, oh, you'll find that row in file five, block 143, row number seven, and that's how we get it. The premise of row IDs was originally about using them as a mechanism for indexes to find rows faster. The row ID is not stored on the table. There's no physical thing called the row ID. It's simply stored in the index to point to its a row's physical location on disk. If you delete a row from a table, obviously its row ID disappears because it's sitting in an index area. And if you insert that same row values back, there's no guarantee it goes back in the same spot. So it probably will pick up a brand new row ID. That's delete and insert makes sense. The row ID is likely going to change because it's probably going to go somewhere else. It might go back in the same spot, but we don't know. If the row gets larger, hopefully you saw that green thing just get a little bit larger. So if, if the row expands like an update and can no longer fit back where it is, then as we know, the database will relocate that to a new block where it can fit. And what happens is we leave a forwarding address. And that way we don't need to update the index. The index still points to the original spot. It gets there and we say, oh, that row got moved out of here because it got too fat. And it gets pushed down to another block and we go follow the link. So all this is common knowledge as to how indexes use row IDs to find rows in a table. The only probably exceptional cases here that might be a little bit sort of out of the ordinary is if you have a partition table, for example, this is a single table comprised of two partitions. If you update the partition key, a row might need to change from one partition to another because they're different segments. By definition, the row must move from one block to another block because they belong to different segments. So this is one of the few times that updating a row might actually change the row ID because we're moving it from one partition to another. It becomes a delete and insert under the, under the covers. Another example is if you're using some of the advanced compression stuff on Exadata, hybrid columnar compression, then the rows are so tightly packed that when you update a row, we might have to take that row out and recompress it and put it somewhere else. So the row ID might change there as well. So there are lots of possible user initiated causes for a row ID to change. If I do hybrid columnar compression, I update a row, it gets moved. If I do alter table shrink space, which simply says, take some rows and pack them down toward the front of the table, then by definition, some of those rows are going to move. If I flashback a table because I've made a mess of the data, the way the database does that internally is it deletes the bad stuff and inserts the good stuff. So it's a delete insert, the row IDs can change. If you move the rows in a table, then by definition, you're actually reshuffling the blocks. So all these things are things that might change the row ID because you're initiating some sort of action. Most people are aware of this, but it doesn't impact the fact that we want to do updates and DML using the row ID as a way of getting to the rows very rapidly. But I want to show you a demo of something that you might not be familiar with and might make you think twice about using the row ID in your applications. So I'm going to create a table here. I've made a percent free zero because I'm going to update some rows and force them to be moved. So I'm going to create a table called T. I'm going to insert a couple of hundred rows. Every row has a hundred bytes on one of the particular columns. So that's going to be enough to fill up at least one block. Therefore, all those rows are tightly packed into one block with no real space for them to grow. Let's grab a random selection of four rows from that block. 
and look at the row IDs. Now, obviously, memorizing row IDs is a little bit cryptic, so let's just remember these last thing. It's an A, X, Z, and a zero. So there's our four rows. Now I'm going to go through, and for every single row, I'm actually doubling the size of this 100-byte column. It now gets 200 bytes. So the vast majority of all these rows are going to have to be reshuffled to other blocks because they've all grown to be larger. The table has actually now doubled in size. So at least half the rows have been moved elsewhere. If I look at the row IDs, however, as we had in the slides, we showed that we don't actually change the row ID because what we're actually doing is simply moving the row somewhere else, but leaving a forwarding address for those rows. So effectively, the row ID remains unchanged because any indexes we don't want to actually modify. So the row ID remains unchanged, even though we've had to move them around inside the block or inside the table because we don't want to affect any indexes that might have existed on this table. So the row IDs don't change. That's common knowledge, as we said. Let's make a slight modification to the demo now. Drop the table, exact same table definition, exact same data goes in. This time I'm going to do alter table T enable row movement. Now, people who are unfamiliar with this will know that we normally use enable row movement on partition tables to allow rows to jump between partitions if you update the partitioning key. We don't normally use it on a heat table because it doesn't seem to do anything. Let's explore. So here's our same demo, A, X, Z, and 0. I update all the rows, make them all bigger. They have to get shuffled around inside the table. And even with enable row movement on, you can see the row ID doesn't change. This is probably what you're familiar with as an Oracle developer. That row ID always points to your row, which means it's safe for you to query the row ID from time to time to know where a row is, and then use that row ID as a quick way of getting back to that same row. Apex does it, Oracle Forms does it, etc. So this is the exact same demo. I'm now running this on an autonomous database, one of the cloud offerings that comes with Oracle. I have a free autonomous database. I encourage you all to get your own free autonomous database as well. Create my table, insert 100 byte rows all the way through. There's my row IDs here. Let's remember A, X, I, and G for those four random rows we picked out of it. I update all the rows, make them all twice as big. I check them all and they're A, X, I, and G as well. No change there. Nothing so far is any, in any way profound. Let's drop the table, recreate it like we did before. Let's insert those 200 rows, each 100 bytes long again, and this time turn on enable row movement. Once again, ultimately really designed for partition tables. Here's my row IDs, A, X, I, and G. Update my rows, and look at this, A, C, N, and G. Anyone who's familiar with row IDs is probably just about falling off their chair by now because this is a non-partition table, and normally, people have assumed for decades that unless you delete and insert a row, the row ID will never change. And on autonomous, that is no longer the case. Where does this come around? Well, number one is it's an autonomous database. That's what you sign up for when you use autonomous. It's a database that is self-managing. It makes decisions on its own to work out how to best look after your data. And one of those things is Things like it can move data on its own volition, and that's what it does. Apex, for example, if you've gone down the Apex path of saying, you know, I don't need primary keys, which is the default, I'm going to use the row ID as a way of locating all my rows, you might get yourself into a bit of grief because we were never encouraging people to do that, but people always thought row IDs never change, it'll be fine. Let's have a look at what happens on an Apex machine if you're, for example, running Apex on Autonomous and you've gone against the recommendations and using row ID. As you can see, I've spent very little time building this little simple table in Apex. It is just effectively four columns, each of one byte. It's a report. I've built this badly. I've said all the navigation between screens, etc., will be done with the row ID and not with the primary key. So let's go and edit one of these rows. So, okay, so if I make the row a little bit bigger, and apply the changes, okay, no problems. It says everything's fine because there's probably enough room for that table to go back into where, that row to go back into where it was. What if I really amp things up a bit? Large, oh, 
This is where Apex has done its updates. It said, yep, I know the role at its row, that never changes. I've done the update. Let's now go retrieve that row to put it back on the screen. That row ID no longer exists. The data got moved elsewhere because we're running on autonomous. So Apex won't know if you go away from the primary key path and start using row IDs on the assumption that row IDs never change. You start getting this kind of stuff. This is a little bit confronting for us that are, you know, generally always assume row ID is this static thing that never changes. And for that reason, we're actually focusing now on the docs as well. If you look at the original docs, any, any version up until 21, you'll see it says for row ID data types, end users and app developers can also use row IDs for important functions. See how a table is organized. It's the fastest means of accessing a row and their unique identifiers for rows in a given table. This is what we're doing to revise those docs because that information is actually not valid. Seeing how a table is organized. Yes, row IDs are good for that. Unique identifiers for rows in a given table. No, not true because clusters have always had the ability to have the same row ID point to multiple rows. So that's being removed. And the fastest means of accessing particular rows, well, that might be true, but that's assuming that row IDs never change. So we're changing this to be row IDs are the fastest means of reaccessing a row if its row ID has previously been retrieved with a select statement. If you've gone and retrieved a row ID, lock those rows, then those rows are static for your duration of your transaction and you can happily use them. You can't go grab a set of row IDs, stick it in a table or grab a set of row IDs, come back in 15 minutes and guarantee that those row IDs are still gonna be present because things can happen. On autonomous, they can happen by themselves. On other databases, any DBA could come along behind the scenes and do some sort of action which changes the row ID. Similarly in the docs, we have thing identifying rows by address. And the only thing we have in the docs at the moment, it says, if you update a row in HCC, the row ID might change. We're revising those docs to say this, the row ID for a, for a row may change for a number of reasons, which may be user initiated or internally by the database engine. I want to highlight that. You cannot depend on the row ID to be pointing to the same row or a valid row at all after any of these operations have occurred, yielding unpredictable or incorrect results. I want to stress that. This has actually always been the case. Ever since we've been able to do operations such as shrink space flashback, which is Oracle 9, then the ability for a table to look as if it's online, no changes, but the row IDs change has always been there. Autonomous is now basically taking that to another level because it's actively making your data better by shuffling rows around without your knowledge. This is the one thing that you can guarantee to be safe when using a row ID. You can select the row ID in preparation for doing some updates and lock those rows. That is the only way you can guarantee that those row IDs are going to stay in, in a constant state. You've locked those rows. They can't be moved anywhere. When you come back, you can now come back and do an update with a row ID, either a single row ID, or this could be a bulk collect and a batch of row IDs or array processing, etc. Try get this into your app development mindset now, which is row IDs can be used as long as you grab them, lock them, and use them. The concept of just storing them, retrieving them, and just assuming they're always going to work is, was never really valid and is definitely no longer valid going forward. I should say you should expect this more often. The database is constantly evolving, especially on an autonomous side of things, to be proactive with your data. For example, automatic partitioning. We can take a table which is non-partitioned and make it a partition table unbeknown to you under the covers. You have to turn it on, that facility, but in autonomous, we can reshuffle data to actually make it more productive for you. The bottom line, <laughs> without being sort of too callous about it, is the row ID is ours, not yours. Think of it that way. We use the row ID for all sorts of things. DBMS Parallel Execute has mechanisms for using the row ID. The chained rows table stores row IDs. The exceptions table. Materialized views have row ID columns in them. Shrink space, flashback, all these facilities use the row ID and they even expose it sometimes in queries or in columns or in materialized view definitions. However, these are all things managed by Oracle and therefore it's our responsibility to look after things like row IDs moving, changing, etc. Our functionality will take care of those uh, anomalous behaviors. What we're saying is, unless you're prepared to do the same amount of work, 
be aware that the role ID can't be something you can rely on as being constant. It, you never could, but people just sort of tended to flirt around those boundary cases. Now, those cases are growing. The role ID is much more fluid than it used to be. So just wanted to really stress that.